Hello, beautiful people. My name is Ebony Davis. In case you don't know, I'm a poet, I'm an author. I'm someone who believes in the transformative power of self-love. Um, I love God, nature, um, spirituality, growth, development. I believe in the evolution of humanity and I'm just here to spread my light and spread my knowledge and spread my wisdom so that we can continue to um, evolve into the next iteration of our being. So I'm so glad that you're here with me today. Um, I have a couple topics that I wanted to cover just because it came to me in a download um, this idea of like new earth and what we're evolving into and I think it was really heavy on my mind because there was recently some news disclosed about aliens and I personally have had downloads about aliens myself um, and this is my first time sharing this but now that it's like been disclosed publicly I'm like okay I'm not gonna feel crazy for putting these putting these ideas and these things and these uh, downloads and these feelings out into the universe um, because there are obviously other people who can attest to the reality of these things. So they're not gonna throw me in the loony bin. They ain't gonna put a straight jacket on me and throw me in the loony bin. They ain't gonna call me crazy, none of these things. Um, I can just put, put my thoughts and feelings out there and um, see where it takes me. I do have my journal um, because I just took a couple of notes on the subject. There were some things that I was thinking about that I just didn't want to forget as I like started talking and I didn't want to ramble too much. I'm going to try to keep it as short and sweet as possible. Um, I just want to drop a few gems and you could be on your way. Um, again, I'm just here to plant seeds of consciousness. I ain't here to argue, argue with your mama. Um, everything that I say is really from a place of experience. Everything that I say is directly from source directly from my relationship um with the divine so i said what i said is very much my philosophy like i said because i ain't here to argue so i think a lot of us have really perceived that the world is changing i think we've perceived that really heavily lately i think it's become extraordinarily obvious in ways that it maybe wasn't before um, and I think generally the feeling is that the world is ending um, you see the climate change you see the rapid decline of animal populations um, you see various war you see global mass disease um, you see political powers shifting falling changing um, in ways that they haven't in the past there's just so many indicators that we are really moving into a different place in our society, a place that we've never been before in our humanity. And I think it's really easy to fall into fear. I think it's really easy to fall into despair, but those are all devices of the system, right? Those are all devices of um, the people who are currently in power to be able to control and manipulate. When you are fearful, um, then you look to external leadership for guidance and that external leadership is able to impose their will on you in any way that they'd like. Because you feel like by following the guidance of these external forces, you will be safer than if not. And so it's definitely a device for control. Um, and I personally believe that this is a time when humanity is being asked to reclaim their sovereignty. Um, we've had enough of externalizing our power. We've had enough of giving our power to external politicians, celebrities, even external saviors, right? Um, I think we've really sort of maxed out on just giving our power away to authorities that aren't within. And I think this is a turning point where humanity is really going to be able to realize um, in an authentic, integrated way that we are the temple, we are the, we are the altar, we are the ancestor, we are the descendant, and our portal and our access to God comes through our relationship with self. Um, we don't have to go through any external source to get to God. God is accessed 
through going inside of ourselves. Um, I personally find so much value in going to church. I love church. I love communing. I love the music. I love the messages. I love being around the people. I feel the spirit so heavy. Um, I'm sensitive to the spirit. And at the same time, I also realize that the home is my church. My bedroom is the church. My body is the church. Um, everywhere, everywhere that I dwell is the church. Everywhere that I dwell, God dwells because I am able to access God from within. I don't need to necessarily go to a pastor or a preacher or a priest. Um, I don't even necessarily, you know, need to go to a shaman or just any ex a guru, any external force. This is really an era of recognizing that we are the portal. We are the access point. Um, and it is through time spent with self that you're really able to, to open that, to really foster that opening and create that opening so that that channel to the divine uh, is constantly available to you. And you're not having to look outside of yourself uh, for guidance. So what we have to realize is that within this reality, that we experience there is so much more than what meets the eye than what meets the 3d okay there's this entire spiritual realm <laughs> that is in existence all around us or this you know dimension that is in existence all around us and at any time through our own cultivation and again going through the portal of self we have access to all of these different divinity points whether it be us wanting to cultivate our relationship with jesus whether it, whether it be us cultivating our relationship to our ancestors, whether it be us cultivating our relationship to Buddha or Allah or whoever it is that you um, pray to or that you give reverence to. Um, all of these energies exist on a frequency in a higher dimension um, where they, they don't materialize in the same way that we do, right? We're material, we're, we're not technically solid, but it appears that we are solid, right? These higher frequencies are on a bandwidth, on a wave, in a higher dimension, and so we can't perceive them in the same way that we might be able to perceive solid matter, but we can perceive them energetically. We get feelings, we have intuition, we get downloads, we get information, we get dreams, um, and these are all indicators of this uh, spiritual realm that we have access to through the portal of self. Okay, and so I feel like I keep going back to this, uh, the earth is dying and then I deviate, going back to the earth is dying and then I deviate. What I wanna say is that the old way of doing things is dying. The earth is not dying. The earth is not going anywhere. But society, as we know it, as we have known it, is completely being dismantled. It's completely falling apart. And that is because society, as we have known it, has been structured to benefit a few and to oppress many. Um, the many being the indigenous people of this earth right the people who originally had connection and reverence to this land uh the people who partook in ritual and understood the value in nature who understand our who understood our place in the cosmos who understood that we are one part one part of a, a many parted being um that we are one cell in the body right and this goes back to the bible as well and this goes back to christianity as well right being a part of this body of Christ you know it's the same concept where it's like I am a single cell in this greater body but you know what one single one single cancer cell has the ability to poison and kill um, you know through spreading it has the ability to poison and kill a much larger being and so we are we have seen how the corruption of certain cells in that poison has started to corrupt the whole and we've really reached this mass place where it's like something has to shift we have to reach a turning point because we can't continue to go on in the way that we've gone on um, and so we're witnessing the crumbling of the system as we've known it.
We're witnessing humanity as we've known it begin to shift. Um, the first will be last, the last will be first. We're seeing the, the empowerment of communities that have been systematically disempowered under these false power structures for hundreds of years. Soon we will see the tables really turn. What's interesting about this sort of new earth concept to me is like those who have been systematically disempowered know how to survive. So those who, who have uh, been in survival mode for so long, and I'm not talking about spiritual and emotional survival mode because those are things that we need to heal within ourselves. But those who know how to survive and live closely to the earth will actually be best equipped going into this new reality uh, that we've been in. And I think when I think of like the last will be first, that's what I think of. It's like these are the people who know how to commune uh, with, the, with the forces of nature in order to make sure that they are prospering in this reality. I say all of this to say, as much as it seems like the old world is dying or the world is ending, it's actually just beginning. Both things are happening. Both things are true. It isn't one or the other, it's both. But how you experience the shift, and this part is really important, how you experience the shift is entirely dependent on your level of perception, your level of consciousness, the frequency that you're vibrating at, right? Because if you are so stuck in the old world, clinging to old ways of being, clinging to old habits, old relationships, old patterns, wanting things to go back to the way they were, stuck in reminiscing, not willing to surrender, then this is going to be a really scary time for you. This is going to be a really fearful time for you. This, this time is going to invoke a lot of anxiety. Um, it's going to invoke a lot of depression. You're really going to be going through it because you're so wanting to go back to an expired version of the way that things are and it's not going back. We can only continue to move up you know, deepen in ourselves and, and expand outward. That's all we can do. There is no going backward, um, especially in this time. It's like, if you try to cling, you're gonna get dragged. Over and over, we're being asked to surrender. We're being asked to evolve. Step into your gifts, step into your power, because that's really how you prepare for this shift is by stepping into those gifts and stepping into those powers. Each of us has a divine gift that will allow us to thrive in new earth, okay? But if we're trying to mimic the ideas of, of success that uh, were once heralded in the past earth and the old way of being, then we're not gonna survive in new earth. Because like I said, the celebrity is dead. The old way of doing things is dead. The old power structures, the political charades, all of that is gone, okay? It's really time for us to step into who we're becoming as a humanity and who we've always been, right? It's so funny. Our final form is our original form. Who we're becoming is actually so much more akin to who we were hundreds and hundreds of years ago than who we are now after these centuries of oppression. Um, it's really about getting reconnected to the earth, reconnected to nature, getting plugged back in, getting that umbilical cord reconnected so that you can get that instruction and get those downloads on how to activate your most authentic self because your most authentic self self knows how to thrive in the new earth. Your most authentic self is cued in and tapped in and attuned to all that you need to do and all that you need to cultivate on the inside so that you're not left behind or so that you're not stuck in fear because you know what's coming. To someone who is stuck in fear, a, bur a burning building tumbling down and crumbling down like Jericho um, is going to induce panic. You're going to be panicked. You're gonna be frightened, it's gonna be scary, you're gonna be under the thumb of whoever wants to control you. But to someone who is sovereign and who can observe it objectively, it's like, okay, that building is crumbling down, more room for me to plant my crops, you know, more land for me to thrive and, and have my family and prosper and, you know, less, less pollution that's being pumped out into the air and more space for me to walk around barefoot the ashes of the old world will be the fertilizer of the new. And that's the perspective of those who have done the work. The shamans, the healers, the Reiki practitioners, the yoga instructors, um, 
you know, the breath work, the sound work, the, the, the people who are doing the work, who have done the work, understand that this is just a transitional period and that we're gonna make it through on the other side. We've been in caterpillar phase for so long. We didn't realize we were dark in the darkness. We thought we were fully exposed. No, we were veiled, we were covered, we were shielded, our eyes were shielded, we were sleeping, um, but we're waking up now. And we're in this chrysalis and soon we will be out on the other side, but that doesn't come without tearing. That doesn't come without ripping apart. That doesn't come without isolation. This isn't going to be Comfortable. It's not supposed to be uh, pleasant. It's not just a walk in the park. You know, I'm not just on some woo woo, love, 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 whatever, whatever, even though it is love, 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 but it's not the idea of love that everybody thinks it is. It isn't all rainbows and butterflies. You know, love also means I carry a sword. Love also means I'm willing to um, slice off the necks of those who try to cross me and come and, you know, destroy my family and those who try to rip me from my land and those who try to rape and pillage. That means I'm coming for your neck because that's what love is to me. That's what real love is. It means I'm going hard for my family. It means I'm going hard for my community. That's what love is too, you know? And so we have to especially as a divine feminine, it's like we have to purge this idea that everything is all just soft and, and rosy. And I, no, love, love uh, destroys and love creates. And it's about knowing when to destroy and knowing when to create. That's what the system don't want is women and men who know when to destroy and know when to create. I say all of this to say that both things are happening, right? The old way is crumbling, the new way is being born. We're, we're having contractions. We have to get this thing out. We're crowning, we're pushing. It's painful, it's not easy. It's the most pain you can ever endure. But you know, if you are at a certain consciousness, you are aware that something is being birthed. That something is being birthed. If you are not at a certain consciousness, then it feels like something is dying. You're in the death. You're either in the life or you're in the death. Right now we're in between and it's a push and pull. A lot of people are vacillating between. One day it's like it's all, it's all death and then another day it's all good and then it's all death again. And you have to just continue to do the work so that you can stay in the life, stay in the life um, and, and cultivate your gifts so that you're ready. When things shift, you're ready. None of this is in my notes, okay? I didn't write none of that down. That was just, let me get into these notes because that was just me ranting and raving, ranting and raving. Um, so yes, we're shifting from the 3D to the 5D. Um, the world is starting over as building, I said, as buildings crumble, that will be more land for us to grow. Um, let's see, don't cling to the old. Yes, yes, yes um lean into purpose and service i think that's a great thing to to talk about leaning into purpose and service and again this comes with cultivating and activating your gifts right because what we have to understand is that our highest purpose is to be of service but it's not martyrdom it's not martyrdom and the difference is that when you do the work and you heal you realize that the only way that you're truly able to give is from a place of overflow. And that if you're not giving from a place of overflow, you're giving from a place of being wounded. And that has to be healed within you. When you're giving from a place of overflow, you're actually living in the, the actualization and the realization of your dreams. You're living in that. And so you feel abundant. And so it's easy for you to give. And you realize that your gifts and the very things that you are most passionate about and the things that you wanna do the most in this earth are actually the most beneficial for everybody else. Maybe it wasn't the most beneficial thing for you to be you know, out in the streets, giving all of your energy away and protesting, although I find value in that myself and I've done that myself. You know, I'm not, I'm not shaming that. I'm, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. Our ancestors were doing that, but maybe there's a way um, of you being a protest and being an embodied revolution that allows you to create that same change, create that same shift 
deliver that same energy into the world that doesn't also drain you of your vital energy because that's what this system does okay it makes us be in a constant state of reaction a constant state of being emotional a constant state of draining ourselves and so there and so there we're not actually able to pour into these gifts and cultivate these gifts that will allow us to be sustained allow the generations after us to be sustained and also empower humanity this is how we empower humanity you have to put your mask on before you assist anybody else this is truly individual work and it starts from healing it starts with it within facing those shadows and going deep within facing that trauma um you know healing yourself i think for so long we've had this idea that we can make the world a better place through this sort of savior behavior oh it rhymed for a reason baby through this savior behavior where we can uh uplift others without actually doing the work on myself i just want to use an example it's like i used to um get into these relationships and have these friendships where i wanted to do so much for other people because i could see the way that they were hurting and as an and as an empath i was like oh my gosh i can fix that you know like dude from holes like i can fix that i could fix that y'all know what i'm talking about if you don't look it up it's a good movie um, but I was like, I can fix that. What I didn't realize is that was a way for me to avoid accountability and doing my own work within. That was a way for me to put myself on a back burner, not prioritize myself, say, you know what, I'm good. I don't necessarily need as much healing as this other person. Let me pour into them. Meanwhile, I'm not understanding that they are being attracted into my reality because the wounds that I'm able to identify in them I'm not able to identify and address within myself. That's why I keep attracting these wounded people. And that's why every time, you know, I, I get drained and I get hurt and I feel used and abused, I go back and I'm like, oh my gosh, I did so much good by this person. How could they do me so wrong? Well, you need to look within, baby. You need to address those wounds within. That's why you attracted that person in the first place. It's because they're mirroring something in you. And if you weren't so caught up in the 3D dynamic of it all, the you know the romance of it all, or the friendship of, of it all, then you would actually see the spiritual aspects and the spiritual reasoning behind you coming together with that person. I think uh, friendships and romance, romantic relationships are so valuable in that way because they can really teach us so much about ourselves, what we desire for ourselves. So often we can see our uh, internal desires that we haven't satisfied manifested outwardly. And I think it's so easy for us to like cheer for other people, watch other people, but then to sit back and, and, and not be the lead role in our own movies. You know, to watch somebody else play the lead role in our movie and to see that energy manifested outwardly, but to not realize that that's also something that exists within us and a desire that we have within ourselves. And that's why we attracted that energy in the first place. So whether it's a great quality or a not so great quality that we maybe need to um, work on, there's so much value that we can get from understanding relationships in this way. That's sort of all I had for the the new earth portion of what i wanted to share with you guys and now i want to shift into aliens right i want to shift into aliens because like i said this is a topic that is really interesting to me that i have not had the opportunity to really talk about to share a lot about but now that it's been disclosed by the government um i feel like i could talk about it without them throwing me in the loony bin so here's what i know about aliens again just like these other spiritual energies and entities, they exist in other dimensions that we cannot perceive physically, but that we can perceive spiritually, energetically, and emotionally. Aliens have been on this planet for thousands of years. This is nothing new. Our ancestors used to commune with aliens, okay? We had this intergalactic knowledge. We've never just been solely Earth people. We've never just been solely earthbound people. What I know is that there have been aliens that have come to this planet that have been hostile. There's been different species, right? There's some that have come to this planet that have been hostile and that have used our own consciousness to imprison us, have used these false systems of power to imprison us. And so a lot of these people, these higher up people that you see in these positions, 
whether they're aware of it or not, there are entities outside of them. And, you know, maybe they mix with a little song, got a little alien blood in them or something. But there are entities that are informing the way that these systems are run through these higher up people. Um, and these entities are able to latch on through frequency and through vibration, through energy, right? And so it's so important that we keep ourselves energetically clean because what we don't realize is that the technology of these energies and these entities are so sophisticated because they are able to um, latch onto us through different dimensions that we're not able to perceive physically. And so if you don't have a, a relationship with that uh, spiritual dimension, then you might not be aware of the ways that these energies are latching onto you. Um, but if you do have a relationship with that spiritual dimension, then you're able to clear that energy, to cast it out, to rebuke it. If you're biblical, you're able to, you know, pray and, and get those things off of you. Um, but the technology is so sophisticated. It's, it's spiritual technology. Um, I really believe that like magic, spirituality, and science are you know, three three sides of the same coin. They truly are. And in school, we've been taught that they're separate, but they're truly the same thing. But, but just these entities are so sophisticated. Um, they're able to sort of latch onto us through these, you know, interdimensional tentacles and um, really just sort of dictate our behaviors and our realities. I believe that this disclosure has occurred because our planet is evolving and we can no longer be under the dictatorship of these entities, these spiritual entities that have like ruled our world for so long. It's time for us to shake that off and to evolve into the next dimension of our being. Um, you know, I think we sometimes call them demons too um different different words for the same thing aliens demons you know they're just energies they're for they're they're uh, malevolent energies that exist in the spiritual realm that have the ability to latch onto us manipulate our behavior and keep us in lower dimensions of consciousness and um it's time for them to be eradicated from the planet as we evolve into the next dimension of who we're meant to be this is what we are up against people it's it's like truly star wars this is like we're fighting for our lives here. This is like intergalactic warfare. Um, and it's it's really interesting. It's really worth just understanding for yourself and hopefully trusting and believing for yourself. Like not looking to, to sources outside of you, but going within to validate and feel, feel into the truth of this information. I feel like the screen just got really dark, but that's okay. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. I'm here. I'm here. Um... The last thing I wanna talk about is the zombie apocalypse, right? Because I lived in LA. I've been to Skid Row. I've seen what it's like down in Skid Row. The zombie apocalypse been started. I'll just say that. Like the, what a zombie is in my opinion and in my experience is a human being who has completely become detached from source. There is an invisible energetic cord just like when you come out of your mother, there's a physical cord. Everything is everything, as above, so below, right? There's an energetic cord that keeps us tethered to source no matter what. When we do not nurture ourselves through our connection to, to nature, through our connection to our food and proper nourishment, when we abuse drugs and alcohol, when we abuse sex, um, when we fully immerse ourselves into this 3D physical world and completely disregard our connection to the spiritual and that cord is severed, we officially zombify ourselves. That is when we become zombies. A lot of people in the entertainment industry are zombies. A lot of these politicians and higher ups are zombies. The zombie apocalypse isn't what you think. It doesn't look like what you think it looks like, okay? It is just a person who has lost touch with the spiritual aspect of themselves. A person who might have sold their soul and it didn't have to be some big, you know, 
ritual or anything like that. It could have simply been offered amount of money to do something that in which they compromised their moral integrity that went outside of what they felt like was in alignment with self, went outside of what they knew to be right. Slowly but surely, they continued to take steps and actions in the direction of moving outside of what they thought was right. Next thing you know, they got a whole bunch of money, houses, cars, whatever, whatever. But their soul, their integrity, their morality, the thing that has connected them to spirit is gone. They're depressed. They're sad. They can't find their way back because they keep taking action outside of spirit. And what they had to do to obtain those physical things outside of spirit, they will continue to have to do in order to maintain them. I think we're really starting to witness people losing it, right? We're really starting to witness people going crazy. And again, this isn't something to be afraid of, like be in your body, be fully embodied, be fully in your power, be sovereign and understand that you are so protected and so powerful and you have protection in so many realms and so many dimensions, right? You don't have to be afraid of this world and you don't have to be afraid of what's going on outside of you. But realize that energetically, this is a chaotic time because so many things are shifting. So many things are being purged from the planet. In order for things to be cleaned up, they have to rise to the surface. And that's why we're seeing so much chaos. The madness has to rise to the surface in order for it to be cleared away. That is what COVID is, right? That is the physical manifestation of this psychological sickness that we've all been living in and dwelling in, this spiritual filth that we've been dwelling in for hundreds of years due to the mistreatment of this planet and our disconnection from spirit. It is rising to the surface so that it can be cleaned away. We're seeing people behave in these wacky, wacky, wacky ways because the madness is rising to the surface. But the love is also rising to the surface. The consciousness is also rising to the surface. But we're going to really see an increase in very strange human behavior um, as it becomes more obvious who is connected to source, who is connected to that umbilical cord, and who is not. Because the people who are not connected to that umbilical cord at this time are going to get thrashed and smashed in the waves of all of this chaotic energy as we shift and ascend into the next dimension. Um, we see so many people who were just like, it's quite obvious that you are not connected to God. You're not connected to spirit. So many people who are elected into the entertainment industry and elected to um, the music industry and the people who are so popularized, it's like, why isn't there anybody in the mainstream who's, who's talking that positive leadership, you know, do better, eat better, be better, love God, pray, eat, pray, love. Why is there, why is it always ass and titties and get money and kill bro bro and you feel me? Why is it always that? And it's like we have to recognize that there's very a very real agenda of this world and that those people are not connected to source. Their umbilical cord has been cut. What you consume consumes you. So I advise at this time that you regulate what you are consuming and realize that it's very, very imperative to be so picky and so particular about what you are taking into your consciousness because that is what is going to manifest into your reality. Especially right now, manifestations are quickening. Things are speeding up. It's rapid. It's happening rapidly. There's no time to delay. Um, and I just want people to be prepared Again, this is not a time to fear, but your your passion and your dreams will prepare you to thrive and excel in this new world. And it's not going to look like success has looked. Again, it's not going to look like how success has looked in the old world. It's a new paradigm of success. Relinquish your ideas of what success can look like. Get attuned with you, your community, what your needs are, what your community's needs are, because that is going to be the new paradigm for success. Healing yourself, healing your family, healing your community, healing earth, healing the animals, being attuned, talking to God, walking in your divine authority, walking in your sovereignty, not looking to external forces for guidance. Honestly, y'all, I'm just so happy to be here with you. 
this is such a, a wonderful time to be on this planet. It's a wonderful time to it's a wonderful time to be alive. Um it's just a great time to be here. Like we are really part of such a huge shift on this planet. Um my old souls, my people who know like this ain't your first rodeo. What a remarkable time to be here. Uh, my advice also would be to find yourself in conscious community, right? Because it's like we are taking on missions that look so radically different from the old paradigm that you will be gaslit. You will be called crazy. You will be mocked. You will be made to feel less than. Um, your audience may be smaller than those who are moving according to the old paradigm because it's just what people are used to. But that doesn't take value away from what you're doing. You just have to create your own system of value. Just like these people created money, paper money, and determined that that was their system of value. You have to go within and create your own system of value. Decide what's true for you. You know, decide what makes sense for you. Decide, decide, reframe your entire reality based on what makes sense for you in this new paradigm because Nothing that's old is going gonna, is gonna to make sense in a couple of years from now. But what you decide to birth and bring forth in this moment is going to make so much sense and it's going to be so valuable. So continue to stay the course and have people around you who can affirm those gifts so that you can step into them boldly. Like this isn't a time to hide. I know the, the path typically forces us into isolation and going within and, um, you know, just just being in isolation and, and and getting to know ourselves and on a really deep intimate level through that isolation but this is such a great time to come into community and be validated in those gifts so you can step into them boldly and you know i personally from experience know how hard that can be especially it's like i'm a model but i'm very much on the shamanic path okay it's crazy i have this ancient um wisdom and I have this very ancient practice and this very ancient role that I've played for hundreds thousands of years prior to this incarnation and it's only now that I'm really able to own that and step into that and a lot of that has to do with my own just validation of self and it has been such a difficult rocky road because as much as you want people around you to see and to validate what has been placed inside of you and what spirit has shown you they simply cannot they simply cannot that has to be an internal working so um yeah with that good luck good luck i wish you the best of luck on this path i'm so happy to be here and i can't wait to connect with you more and to just see what this brings um i'm sending you all so much love and i hope this was helpful i hope you feel less alone i hope you feel empowered that was the point of all of this and um again it's just all about love it's just all about love have a blessed day and um i'll talk to you soon peace